In a typical cell, there are approximately 42 million proteins as per the recent data on yeast proteome studies. So our cell will be having more number of proteins. According to Human Genome Project, we have 20,000 genes approximately. How can this 20,000 genes code for this 42 million proteins? The only possibility is a gene should code for more than one protein. Here comes the alternative splicing. Alternative splicing is a process during gene expression that allows a single gene to code for multiple proteins. It's also called alternative RNA splicing or differential splicing. Now let us see what is alternative splicing. So this is a gene with exons and introns. So exons are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Upon transcription, so this is the pre-mRNA with exon and intron. Here comes the alternative splicing. So this is a normal protein. During mRNA processing, these exons are joined and introns are removed. So we will be having this mature mRNA. From that mature mRNA, upon translation, a protein is formed. So this protein has all the exons or coding sequences. Then there are other possibilities. Sometimes 1, 2, 4, 5, the third exon is removed. So that we'll be getting a different protein. This is protein B with slight variation. In some cases, it will be 1, 2, 3, 5. Fourth exon is deleted or removed. So we'll be getting at another different protein. So all from a same sequence same DNA sequence will be getting different proteins or a same DNA sequence can code for many related proteins. This is called alternative splicing. Splicing is carried out by an enzyme complex called spliceosome complex where introns or non-coding sequences are removed and exons are joined together to form mature mRNA. Alternative splicing involves the joining of exons from the same gene in different combinations forming different mRNA as you see here that can be translated to produce related different proteins. So a single gene can code for many related proteins using alternative splicing. Now let us understand the seven types of alternative splicing. First one is called the cassette exons. It's also called as exon skipping. So this box, colored box is the exon and this line is the intron. Here an exon is either spliced out of the primary transcript or maintained in the mature RNA. So we'll be getting a complete mRNA having all the exons at times. One of the exon is skipped. So here it is 1 and 3 is joined here. 2, the exon 2 is skipped. So this is the most common type of splicing. Nearly 30% in vertebrates and invertebrates. That's why this is called as exon skipping. The second type is called mutually exclusive exons. Here as you see, we have 4 exons 1, 2, 3 and 4. Here one of the two exons is retained, either 2 or 3. Here it is 1, 1, 3 and 4 or 1, 2 and 4. You can see here 1, 2 and 4. Here it is 1, 3 and 4. Either the second exon or third exon is skipped. So this is called mutually exclusive exons splicing. The third one is called intron retention. Here these are the two exons 1 and 2. Here an intron is retained in the pre-mRNA. This is the rarest mode in mammals but very common in plants. In this case the gene is with an intron therefore the coding sequence, the continuity of the coding sequence is lost, may be forming a non-functional protein or a polypeptide without a complete sequence, complete amino acid sequence or a partial polypeptide if there is a stop codon. Next one is called alternative 5', five prime splice site. So here an alternative 5' prime splice site junction is used as you see here the splicing happens. So changing the boundary of the upstream exon. So third one this is the upstream exon. So the splicing site occurs here. So the boundary of this 3' prime upstream exon has changed to here. This is joined together. So an alternative splice site causing splicing at a different site has happened. 
The next one is alternative three prime splice site. Here, what is happening is in the third axon, an alternative three prime splice junction is used. So uh, this is the downstream axon, the second one. So the boundary of the second one has moved to here or changing the five prime boundary of the downstream axon to this match. And final two are called alternate promoters and alternative polyadenylation. So different transcription start site in the case of alternate promoters. If there are two or three promoters, transcription can happen at either of the promoters. So sequence between these promoters are either removed or selected depending on the selection of promoters. This is regarding different transcription start site or in simple means different option of choosing different transcription start site so that we can have different proteins. The second one is polyadenylation. Polyadenylation is a normal process that is happening in mature mRNA. At the end of the mRNA, a poly A tail is added. So the site at which this poly A tail is added may be changing so that we can have different proteins. The end site or different end sites are there so that lead to the production of different proteins. So these are the seven types of alternative splicing. In short, alternative splicing is a mechanism that helps a single gene to code for many related proteins. Hope you are clear. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsforry.com.